Hello everybody, I'm Jerome right here again and once again you're joining me on my Jeronification channel here on YouTube. Okay, and um, I'm going to do a, a um, follow-up video on, I've been on George Washington. I believe in my last video I did his, um, the Washington Dome um, painting which um, was in the uh, Washington building. And it's the um, apostasis or apostasy of um, Washington, where he actually had himself um, depicted in divine stature up there in the dome. In that painting there, which is actually right here beside me. Okay. Right there. Now, what's amazing about this is that I told you that Washington had this higher knowledge as to not only how to genetically alter himself but those around him and the um, the likenesses of future mankind genetically physically and genetically to alter as genetic through a genetic manipulation process through a cult like ritual death and resurrection and the apostasy image, I'm going to do just a, a recap, a rehash of that, is that I showed you in a certain resolution in looking at this image. If you bring this image in close, you will not be able to see it. There's a certain resolution, pretty much where I pretty much have it at right now, to whereas the skirtings of these women are encrypted with the creatures in which they, the genetics they represent, in which Washington has bridged himself over with. And it's actually representing that of African or African ape descendants and um, ancestors and that of this of a horse and a bunch of a host of other creatures. The creatures that stick out with, to you the most in this resolution, I told you that was that of the ape. Notice that the woman's hair, head is here and she her arm swings over just as that in a um in um, Primavera by Botticelli. Okay, the same exact thing where the presence of the ape is actually there. Well, her skirt creates the, the, the ape. And the way her arm is positioned, that envelope, the little area there, creates the open mouth of the ape. And her body shows you that these genetics are being bridged over. Even in her skirting right there, it creates the eyebrow of the ape. And then right there at the, at the point of my pen is the eye um, socket. And it creates a full head of that of a monkey. And... The top lip is right there in that opening where her sleeve, her gown sleeve, is creates a, a, um, a cavity right there. And then her head actually creates the bottom lip of that ape creature. You go to the other side. The other woman over here creates the, uh, the face of a horse. There's other stuff that is there as well too, but the horse sticks out. Okay, and it's created by actually a horse with his tongue out because her foot sticks out through her skirting and creates a horse with the tongue out of its mouth. Nostril, nostril. Um, mouth and then bottom lip of the horse there okay and then there's the high of the I mean eye of the horse okay now this woman down here which is actually supposed to be an angel has the wings if you turn her upside down it actually creates a bird her skirting creates a bird there's the head of the bird there's the body of the bird, here's the tail feather of the bird, there's the wing feather, right wing feather of the bird, and as you can see, it's consistent with that woman that's actually wearing wings in the first place. She has the, where are we at there? Oh, she has the wings on either side of her body, okay? Now, I'm telling you that this is a readable, readable genetic print, blueprint, and it shows you how in a cult-like way, George Washington engaged in genetic manipulation that altered himself, those around him, and unsuspecting others, okay, um, being that of Americans. And this is how it's done. This is the chemistry that he actually used. This is the blueprint, okay. Now, there's another, another painting out there, which is right here. And this painting, and as I showed you here, I'm going to show you that just as we see the horse here, the reason why I brought this, this, this painting back up because we have the horse there and the ape there. It's my position that another artist, and this is an 1866 painting 
by John C. McRae, based on the um, a painting by Henry um, Henry Breckner or Breckner or Bru or Breckner Bruckner, whatever. Okay, so here we have again almost a similar thing as what in the apostasy painting that I told you about. If you look here, there's the horse. Washington is in the middle. Then you have a man standing over here in the shadows with a garment in front of him. You know, you you got to know, I mean, if the man is in the woods making a prayer, that's one thing. But to have these bizarre scenarios, these bizarre scenarios to create them, you know, it raises red flags because it shows you that something is a mischief. I mean, why would you have a darkened forest image? Why? You, in other words, look at the setting, a gloomy center, setting, like a cult-like scenario. It doesn't even seem realistic. I mean, something seems admissed. Okay, let's just say that, okay, well, it's a black and white image. Okay, fine, I can go along with that. But why have these guys over here under the fire, the horse right there, Washington um, in the middle, and then this guy over here from behind a tree looking with a, with a strange garment in his hand and looking over at Washington. You see what I'm saying? Don't you see that this whole painting seems like a displacement of something like cult-like? I want to point out some things to you. It's my position because I can see a face in the garment, that of, of our ape ancestor. I see a face in there. I think I even highlighted it. You, you will go cross-eyed trying to actually see it. You have to, because they're multi-dimensional images, you actually have to sit there and stare at the image and make it an ape because this painting is good. McCray did a good job on encrypting this painting, okay? But the image is there. It, it's my position that this guy is representing that of our ape ancestor, that this guy here, this Caucasian guy, and is showing you where he's unveiled and he's holding the the skin of that of our ape ancestor meaning he's genetically separating from that creature okay it's my position that this is what these images and the mo monumentous moments that Washington has done besides the war and all of that stuff there it's my position that Washington was also engaging in cult like rituals which actually caused for the genetic altering of mankind and it's reminiscent to me because Constantine has done the same exact thing I can do the same thing with Constantine whom is affiliated with Christianity and the Vatican okay and popes it's my position that even Constantine in those monumentous moments where he's seen the Red Cross and the skies and all of this, this, that, and the third, and his victories, he'd been led on and all that, that all of these things, people, are the same exact thing. It lets you know at a time, it, it, it marks a monumentous point in time where there was a, a, a huge, a, a gigantic genetic change. Something has been altered with that of mankind and it's been recorded in such a way that they use not only historical war moments but they also use them as a key referencing point to show you what this man was doing in his cult-like rituals the same thing for Adolf Hitler I can show you where he was doing such an engaging such and many others okay and I can show you through the encrypted styles in the artwork and in the writing, the ancient text in the writings, because that tells us as well. And pretty much everything. If you if they're if they're if they're guilt, guilty in one sense, they're guilty in all sense. I want to show you something about this painting. I want to show you first this claw right here. There's a claw right there. I'm gonna bring it in closer. Uh, <laughs> You see that? In the tree, there's a claw. A 
very descriptive image of a claw. Now I narrowed it down to not one specific, not to a specific creature, however, but the claw of a sea of a sea crab. Okay, representing the sea, right there. You see these lines. There's a point up in here. Look at how it goes from its smallest point, and it even elevates up. This is what a crab's claw does. This is very descriptive in nature of that. Look at the separating right here. In fact, can I draw that? There are separating lines. Let me let me hold this so we can we're not shaking all over the place here. There are separating lines that where this pincher would be opening and closing. There's one there. You see that line there? There's one there. There's one here. There are the separating features. There's the pincher claw. Then there's the bottom one that's actually tied in with the tree trunk. I mean, with the tree root there. And these lines, it even divides here as a as a crab claw would. Now I found a couple of crab claws. I'm going to bring in as comparison. Uh, what do we have? Here's here's one. Uh, there's a couple there. These lines, people. You see that where the pincher separates? That's what I was just showing you just now. And then where it elevates to the next level, where there's a joint. People, all of that is right there. This is supposed to be a tree root. So what is a sea crab claw doing in here? In this image, in this 1866 image. Now, here's a, uh, a, a, a almost like a, like a prehistoric creature, crab. Just to give you an idea, and this was about the closest I could get to because this this crab claw that's in this painting and now in the painting there has a point right here, and this was the closest that I can come, and that point is back here, I believe, somewhere on this one. But this is very descriptive of the creature that this represents, and it's my position that. There is a reference of, of death, I mean, of, 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 yeah, of death and resurrection, and it's including reptilians, oceanic life forms, and that of our ape ancestors, and, and of course with dinosaurs as well, too. Now, I already told you that I see faces back here. Specifically that of the ape. Now there's multi-dimensional faces that this guy is holding. This is the skin, the cloak. Okay, it's my position that they show you that they are shedding the skin, the genetics, which means shedding the genetics of this of this creature. How are they doing it? This creature, I mean George Washington, showing you that they were bridged over the ape and this and this beast right here, which represents the ancient dinosaur. Now, always with death, death and resurrection. You know, in a lot of the images with Christ and Mary Magdalene, where there's a cross at the top somewhere there's a cross there you know and then usually there's a skull at the bottom of the cross we know those you you've seen a lot of those renaissance images right i'm not going to go digging one up now but death and resurrection you ever see where jesus is hanging at the cross on a lot of those ain't i mean those those um, early on renaissance paintings and there's a skull at the bottom of jesus's foot or with mary magdalene the same exact thing you notice that in a lot of those christian um um, um Christian-like um, images, you see a skull in there that represents death. This is what they evolved from, telling you that the ape ancestor part of them, the African ancestor part of them, was laid to rest and laid dead, laid dormant. That's what that skull means, laid down. Okay, They evolved from the genetics of that beast. Okay, and I can show you in many Renaissance artists because that was an encryption style that was consistently utilized in many of the encryption styles that was used. Okay, I want to show you that skull here. I just showed you the crab call, call, call that. The skull is right here in the root, right there. I'm going to bring up, there's my highlight. I did a poor highlight of it actually, but the skull is right there in the root. I'm going to bring it in closer. I'm going to bring you another uncut version. And this is a um, image that can be easily Googled, people. Look at the skull 
right there. Right eye socket, left eye socket, nostril cavity, mouth, bottom chin area. The skull, I'm circling, I'm going around the skull right now. Just before the skull, you could barely see it, but I know she is there as my lovely creature, the mother of creation. I dub her as Madonna, um, Mary, these divine women, all of them, because she's all of them twisted into one, this woman. Wherever there is a reference of the cross-referencing of mankind's genetics, the creation of mankind, the image of that which like woman appears. There's her left eye, her nostril, and the rest of her face is down up in here in the shadows. Okay, there's her cheekbone there. And the rest of her face is right here, right at that sea crab claw leg. So it's the sea crab claw leg. I'm pinching. The mother of creation. There's a skull. And then there's the image of our reptilian ape band. Let me see if I can get that, that creature in. Which again, this artist did a great job of, of actually encrypting it. But if you looked right in here, there's a stressed out image of a monkey. A reptilian monkey. Not just any monkey. A reptilian monkey right there. Okay? Now, it gets better, people. Because look how this vine is broken right here. This root is broken and then starts again. Shows you George Washington bridged over. You see that? He, he creates the bridge. He's bridging. He's bridging old and new. So where is this bridging taking part? This is, this is what's showing you what's, what's happening here with these genetics. It's a cycle. Look, it goes like this here. There's a cycle like that. And George Washington, just like in the apostasy image, where he's sitting right there bridging right there it's he's doing the same thing here in this cycle right here check this out look at this here there's a reference of prehistoric creature skulls look at this skull right here of that almost of like a baboon like creature right there there's the nostril there's the eye socket there's the mouth. There's a separating ball jaw line right there. This is the top portion of the skull of that creature. And then there's the j bottom jaw portion. And lo and behold, there's another creature back behind here. Forensic anthropologists or those people there will probably figure out which creatures are being referenced by this. I'm not best suited to do that. Okay. Now, I'm based on this image here and other images where they are more on point and you can see what type of creature it is but to me that looks to something almost along the lines of a baboon okay and then we have the other creatures there but these these creatures these skulls which appear in the uh, the artist did, did a, a clever um, 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 drawn in here to where he discombobulated them a little bit but those that knows that these encryptions are here can pinpoint on what these encryptions are but their skulls it shows you these genetics of the creatures that are being mentioned here now this is the second painting besides the one in washington dc that clearly shows and, and lends to my point that i'm proving but this is the second painting 1866 that shows us the same exact thing Monkeys on this side, horses on that side, and George Washington in the middle being bridged. And then and even in the front of him, in a cauldron cult-like way, there's skulls of dinosaurs here. Ancient, ex uh, extinct creatures. And then, death and resurrection, a skull, monkey, and references of sea creatures. My position... And I can read more into this, but it's my position that this entire painting, which is supposed to be referencing that of a prayer in Valley Forge, is also telling you of a momentous moment where George Washington engaged a cult-like ritual which calls for the genetic altering of himself and those around him. And that's what this painting is referencing. 
This is the same thing that can be done with ancient biblical times, with anybody in ancient biblical times. Not just limited to Jesus and Mary Magdalene or John the Baptist. I can do this with everybody. In ancient, if they are somebody, these miracle babies, everybody, I can do the same thing with. Okay? Um, it's just it's just amazing. We can do this with ancient Rome. We can do this with ancient Egypt. We can do this with ancient China. We can do this with ancient Maya. We can do this with ancient Anaki. We can do this with ancient Sumerian. All of these ancient groups, I don't care what they are, we can do this with. Because there are records that show you why and how and how this is even possible that this occurred. Because nothing meant more to our ancient ancestors than who they genetically were, where they genetically came from, and where they were genetically going. And that's what this is all about. My name is Jerome Wright. I'm going to close this video out short, and I'm going to begin another video. So thank you for watching, and I appreciate your viewing. Thank you.